Hey, oh, what's going on everybody? Ken in here. Those are the monkey tail skinks and they're hanging out in their house. Here's Solomon. Let's get Solomon out. Oh, big fat Solly. Oops, sorry, Solly. Did you bump your head? There is Solomon, everybody. And what I want to do today in this video is uh, we're going to give these guys a complete makeover in their enclosure. Um, I'm just bored. You know, quarantine will do that to you. So uh, I think it's time we get these two lizards uh, dialed in in a new, beautiful. We're gonna, we're gonna, what do we do there? We're gonna design at a time. And we're also going to do a makeover, which is gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna uh, secure this bottom a little bit better because eventually. Jeepers, that was loud. Sorry, are you okay in there, young lady? Sorry about that, dear. Uh, whew, that freaked me out. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a few things. I wanna, of course, change the layout here of this kind of uh, the, the trees and branches and stuff. Uh, also, since one day Slinky will live uh, in both areas, I wanna go ahead and shore this up so that they can't escape or Slinky can't dig in and stuff like that. So I'm probably gonna take all this wood out and I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, a mesh bottom. And uh, then we're gonna put some substrate on top of that. And uh, we're just gonna have fun. Uh, let me show you what we're working with here, people. I've got a package, people. And uh, it's like this. So where is Slink's? Oh, there he is. Hi, Slinky. He's just catching some rays. Oh, by the way, Guapo is doing splendid. Hey, Guaps. His legs are good, good. He's been making poopies. He's looking hydrated. He loves a good scratch. He's chasing Lola around. So all is correct in the universe right now. So that makes me happy. But uh, in the meantime, we are um, going to show you what we're working with. As you know, our friends at Fluker sent me a massive shipment of their materials. So what I'm going to do is I had all that stuff in the garage and I need to make room. And uh, what better way than to actually use the stuff. So uh, you'll see we got a whole big pile of fun things to dress this enclosure up with. And uh, we've got bedding. We've got coconut bedding. We've got reptobark there. We've got it. It's really good stuff. We got driftwood, we got water bowls. So uh, I'm just gonna go hog wild here today uh, using all this cool stuff. And maybe it'll inspire you guys to do something uh, in your own terrariums and just get things going. So that's what I'm on about right now. Let's get to it. It's very hot, we don't care. So I gotta get these lizards out first and um, we gotta get them secured up somewhere else so that nobody gets injured whilst I work. And uh, there you go. Hi, Slinky, me again, don't whip me. Thank you, buddy, I love you, all right? You know, you gotta talk to Slinky, let him know where you're at, because uh, if you don't, you startle him and he gives you a good whip. I've also done this, just check it out. We got the snakes back out. Uh, they're back out in their summertime enclosures. We're using these Fluker water bowls. I love these bowls. They're very uh, easy to clean, um, and the guys are out. The Timors are in there. The, you know, there's snakes. They're kind of hiding out during the hottest part of the day. But let's go ahead and get these guys situated. I also want to kind of dress up this little house for them a little bit better as well. So I think he's going to go back inside it. I can just lift out the entire house, and they'll be good. Easy, buddy. Now, remember, you don't want to get bit by these guys. Get in there, you sexy thing. Little monkey tail. Monkey tail. Monkey tail. Get your monkey tail. All right, people, I'm going to get these guys out, and uh, we'll see you again in a minute. All right, first things I got to do is get out some of this uh, furniture that already exists in there, and that's what I'm up to right now. Well, we use some of this stuff over, and I'll probably cut down some new pieces, but I want to get everything out because we're going to put a screen on the bottom there, and I'm going to drill it and screw it into the metal frame below. Uh, we'll leave this here until I get my, uh, my good old my good old drill. This can go bye-bye because there ain't no plant in it. Ain't no use for it. So let's go. Now, the key is not to drop it on a tortoise, a little turtle, or lizard. Oh, that was dangerous. Whew. My shoelace got caught. Okay. 
there you go. Next, I'm gonna just cut some screen and we're gonna put it in there. Okay, so I got the first phase done. We went ahead, we meaning me, went ahead and I got the screen on the bottom here so that if there's an animal on the outside that digs, he cannot dig inside. And then these guys can't dig out into this enclosure. So it's completely sealed. And if you remember, my diamond pythons used to be in here. And as we know, the tragedy that happened last year was that the diamond python got eaten. Uh, I did seal this up. It's double layered. So there's no chance in Slinky getting over here again. Uh, there should be no issues. And I'm also going to put some extra latches on this door. Uh, there's going to be one at the top and then one down below as well. So we're going to make sure that this is a completely enclosed enclosure and uh, these monkey tails will have no issues. So I'm probably going to remove this, start putting up some different trees and branches, work on their hide box a little bit. Uh, I've got some cool ideas for that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, yeah, that's a little update. Uh, we're going to keep on going. Uh, right now, I got to stop and uh, put the propane uh, tank onto the grill so that we can get dinner tonight. Uh, Kate's making something on the barbecue, so that'll be pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, so I made a mess. Some of these uh, I'm going to use again. Uh, others I'm not. There's a Lola, and then we've got a little... Oh, there was a little guy floating around, a little uh, box turtle, a little Chinese box turtle. There he is. Hi. How are you? So I've got to be careful where I step. But uh, otherwise, things are going well. So I'm really excited. So that's done we're going to start getting the furniture back into the enclosure start setting that up and uh, i'll see you guys again in a second bye All right, so here I am. How you doing? Just blowing off that there lens. And uh, this is where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm going to be calling it a day. And uh, this is what we got done. We got some really cool branches up here. So this thing goes high. These guys like to climb. We got the screen in. But much like uh, Lagatha's box, I started getting creative, trying to break up the rough edges of the, of the uh, nest box here. And uh, I'm gonna fill this in. We've got some fluker moss and uh, Spanish moss and some other mosses that I'm gonna kind of stuff into here and kind of staple on and kind of give it a really cool look. So we'll do that in a little bit, but I gotta eat. So we're gonna shut it down right now. Uh, but you can see I just need to drill out some of these or just cut these uh, screws off. A few of them are poking out, but it uh, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Again, it just fits perfect. I used the uh, driftwood that Fluker gave me. Um, really good stuff, plus some uh, wood that I had left over from all these guys. So pretty good stuff. Uh, I've got to remember I'm going to have a water bowl here, and uh, there's my... Um, this is where the water comes out on the timer. So got to get that done, get all the mulch in and uh, basically get these little lunatics. They're climbing around here. I locked up Guapo and Lola. They'll just have to be locked up. And then these guys are just walking around and here's the female. So I'll let them do their thing in here tonight. And then, um, yeah, just going to get to it early in the morning tomorrow. So we'll pick up then. I'm pretty excited. This is definitely going to look a lot better than it was. In fact, I might even cut some of this wood up and stick it to the uh, box itself. So I just was sit sitting it there. I know I want to get some wood on this side. Uh, we're unfortunately not going to be able to get any wood back here, I don't think. Uh, but you never know. Depends on how I feel. All right, guys, I'll see you in the morning. All right, everybody, uh, we are back at it this morning. And um, as you can see, I did a few more things to the nest box. Uh, I just like the way these look, man. It's a little different. And uh, we cut out a hole. They can get in there. Should be no issues. They could squeeze through there. Um, but uh, now we are in the home stretch. Uh, the lizards, there's Solomon. He's just been hanging out up here all day. And then little El Diablo is up in the corner over there. Um, basically, I want to get these guys back in because we gotta let Guapo and Lola out of their house 
because the days are wasting. So I've been hard at it. Well, let me show you what I've done so far. I put a little bit of a barrier up just to hold in some of the bedding that we're going to get working on here in a moment. Um, so we've got a barrier now to kind of retain some of the soil. We've got the mesh down, the wire mesh. Uh, this is a good stuff. No one's digging through to get out or in. We've got all kinds of really cool stuff for them to climb around on. And uh, yeah, we're gonna start working on this box, just dressing it up a little bit more, dressing up the enclosure. I kind of love this stuff. Now, the good thing is, is our friends at Fluker uh, actually have really cool products that are gonna help me out. Now, a lot of this stuff can be used in home terrariums. If you guys watch my buddy uh, Serpa, uh, you know, Tanner Serpa, he can use this type of stuff to make really beautiful polydariums and terrariums. I'm not as talented as him, uh, self-admittingly that, uh, but I like to do things outdoors. And this product is great for outdoors too. So what we're gonna do is I got two bags of this coconut fiber bedding. We're gonna mix in with the Reptabark here. I always love this Reptabark, especially when you're mixing it in with this bedding here, the coconut fiber uh, bedding, because it's just a nice natural earth uh, and when you mix it together, the coconut fiber is gonna actually retain moisture. So say we're using it for little guys like these box turtles here, these Chinese box turtles. If I were doing this for my baby tortoises, which you've seen, uh, I like to mix this together because it gives a nice consistency. You get a thin layer of the repti bark on top and uh, you put this stuff on the bottom and this holds moisture. This is good for resistance when they're walking on it and when they burrow down, they get to that microclimate that they need. So very important, same thing with these lizards. I just want a nice uh, kind of organic substrate for them to kind of have their droppings fall down. The cool thing is, is that all the little bugs and beetles in here are gonna eat their droppings and it will become a very nutrient rich uh, environment for those bugs. So it's kind of bioactive outside. We've also got Got some uh, moss here, some sphagnum moss. We're gonna moisten this. I'm probably gonna put it, uh, some of it inside the actual uh, nest box because I think they would like to lay on this rather than just the wood. Uh, so we've got two bags of that. And then we've got some Spanish moss. Now I can find this stuff just kind of hanging out all over the trees, but for those of you that live up north, no worries because they actually package it. And uh, this is a really cool decorative uh, place. Now the animals can actually get into this. You can use it as a bedding. You can moisten it if you'd like, or you can decorate the terrarium, which is what I'm gonna do. And we're gonna start right now with this stuff. I wanna just start hanging it around some of the areas on this, um, on this box right here. Oh, the other thing I have, which we'll do first actually, to be perfectly honest, is I like these little water dishes for my animals. So let's open this Fluker water dish up. It's just a cool, natural looking design. Let's open this guy up. Always difficult to do with one hand, friends. But uh, you know, I roll, roll quick on my videos here. You just get it done. So just showing you guys, giving you some ideas how to kind of turn things into a little bit more of a natural look. So we got this right here and I'm gonna drape that in there and there the water is gonna fill up and uh, no issues. We'll have a food dish here for them. Uh, but I like this. There's a little highway right to their home. Uh, pretty cool. And let's get to it. Let's grab this stuff and see what we can come up with uh, with it right now. Okay, so you can see I moistened the sphagnum and I put it in here as a bedding, which I think these lizards are gonna appreciate more than just laying on the, the, the wood, you know what I mean? They can burrow into it, they can feel secure. Uh, really love that. And then let's see, we've got the sphag, excuse me, the Spanish moss. And uh, that's all I did with it. It's gonna get decayed and get old and I'm sure these guys are gonna rummage through it, but I wanted to just spread it out all over the place and it kind of covers any of the wood. Uh, when it really looks good when you drape it though from the top, you see that? And it just falls down. It gives it a really cool uh, otherworldly look, which I like. And uh, there you have that. So now we're gonna go ahead and put some bedding in. I'm just gonna go ahead and spread around some of this uh, coconut uh, bedding. And then we're gonna clean everything up and then we're gonna be ready to get these guys back in. Are you excited, buddy? Are you excited or what, man? It's gonna be so cool. All right, so here we go. 
I'll just put you guys right here while I open this and we'll just spread it around. It's not really rocket science. We're just going to dump it in. And I don't really need a lot. These guys are arboreal. So we'll get one bag and I'll just kind of throw it around. I'll probably hit this with a, um, a little bit of water here in a little while. Going to moisten it down. Just going to let this happen. Some of it's going to fall through. I might need uh, more than two bags, which no worries. Fluker's got me covered. So let's go ahead and keep going. Let's get it spread around. And I love using this stuff uh, for many applications. You can actually use this uh, if you spray glue, you could throw this onto the nest box and it'll adhere to the nest box and give it a really cool look if you wanted to do that. So pretty good stuff and it'll retain, like I said, moisture. So if I wanted to, and I want to put some maybe juvenile tortoises in here on the ground, uh, they'll be taken care of because these guys won't eat them. They'll be too big and uh, it'll be a cool multi-species exhibit. Maybe I can put some kind of baby elongateds in here. That would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? Because these guys are kind of close to the rain. Well, not really, uh, actually. They're from the Solomon Islands and the other guys are from Indonesia, but they have the same requirements uh, as far as humidity and diet. So would it be that big of an issue? Okay, let's just keep spreading it around. I think I'm gonna go grab another bag of this stuff and I'll spread it around. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, coconut bark in there. And I think we'll be done and ready to get these guys out. Or in, rather. We are doing good here. Let's get these bags of the Repta Bark in. So we've got everything finished here as far as the flooring. I love this uh, forest floor. It looks really cool. Uh, it definitely makes things look a little bit more natural in this enclosure. But I forgot one thing that I have. I want to try out these bender branches, these vines. Uh, I could set these up and string them along and it would give it more of an area for these guys to practice and enrich themselves on. They can use that monkey prehensile tail right there. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going and uh, then we are done. So uh, let me string these up and uh, we can put animals in. Got a good idea here. I'm gonna staple one end with my staple gun and that'll really get this thing dialed in perfect. I also wanna make sure that I don't put it anywhere where I might be walking to kind of annoy me. So let's see, just kind of do these bendy branches like this. Oh, that's kind of cool. Give it a viney look, you know? We got plenty of bendy branches. I could even use these to hold on some of that Spanish moss. Let's go ahead and get a little staple in there. Perfect, 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 perfect. I love it. <laughs> this is the fun part, guys. You just get to uh, be creative and imagine yourself as the reptile and what would they want 
how would they want to move around? Give them things to explore and do. That's how you give animals enrichment. And that's how you also enrich yourselves by being able to watch these animals and know that you're doing everything in your power to give them the best possible life. This is fun. It's really not rocket science. You just kind of go with the flow. There's no right or wrong way to design it. One more. Okay, here it is, everybody. We've used all these great products that Fluker sent me. We've redone the monkey tail skink habitat. I am going to be cleaning up this mess. But first, why don't we get these lizards back in? Let's go get El Diablo first. Come on, little lady. Oh, come on, baby girl. Now you gotta be gentle with her. You don't wanna hurt her as you pull her off. And I also don't want to get bit because she is quite the ornery gal. Because she got all them teeth and uh, not enough toothbrushes or something like that. I don't know. Let's see if she can climb on this stuff. Let's see. Let's see how she handles. Look at that. This is great. No issues, man. Just climbing on that vine. Oh, my God. The repti branch. Look. And she uses her tail to counterbalance herself. Very cool. Looks like she's shedding a little bit. Very nice. Oh, so awesome. These guys are great. Hey, Solomon, are you ready, buddy? Are you ready to go back in? I'm gonna grab you now, bub. Come on, my friend. Come on up here. You got the sharpest claws. These guys really do have some sharp claws, so when you grab them without gloves, you feel it. But look at, he's gonna let go. There you go, buddy. There you go. It's okay. Let's see if he does well on the repti bark, or rather, repti branch. Let's get him up here. Come on, bub. He's a bigger lizard, but let's see how well he does. Don't worry, I'm right here. And he's clamped onto my fingers. Oh, look at this, look at this. Oh my God, they can do so well. That is awesome. It looks like I got a little damage here in shipping. I'll just have to have them send me another one. But uh, my gosh, look at him go. What, let's see what he does. Is this awesome? You see how he's just gripping on very nicely and sooner or later that tail will lock on to it as well. But this is what I mean, guys. You actually want the lizards to be athletic. You want them to kind of figure things out. You don't want them to just have it too easy. You want them to be able to kind of move about in a naturalistic way as though they had to figure it out in the wild. That's what I love about this. And once he gets himself situated, no issues. Let's see where he goes from here. Oh my God, I love this. This is what makes it so worth it for me, guys, is when we do things for our animals, you get the satisfaction of seeing them interact with it, but more importantly, uh, these animals are happy. Um, you know they don't smile. They don't have muscles in their face to do that. But you know, as a keeper of reptiles, that you can actually make these animals' lives so much better if you just put in a little extra effort and you use the proper products to help stimulate these animals' lives. And what we've done here today is we've used some natural products, some products from Home and Garden. Of course, our friends at Fluker hooked us up with some really great things. If you can't go out and just get Spanish moss, if you don't live in Florida. Oh, whoa, she's so mean. What are you doing? Oh, no. Be nice to Solomon, will you, El Diablo? Uh, but if you can't get to these places where we have this in the wild, don't worry because Fluker's got you covered with some organic stuff, some moss. Don't forget the moss we have on the inside. Uh, they also have the bendy branches, driftwood we've used from them. Uh, just to make this thing look 
so much better. If you're like me, you always wanted your own little private zoo. You always wanted to see these animals up close and personal. And that's what the joy of keeping reptiles is all about, man. Getting to share space with these animals and be their steward. You don't own them, you take care of them. They're your wards. So you gotta make sure you do the best thing for them. And that includes husbandry, diet, and of course, the environment. Well, there you have it, everybody. We had some fun today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, really, really love what I was able to accomplish. Don't worry, I'm gonna turn on that water and we'll get some water in there for these guys. But I really think we had fun. We learned a little bit. The monkey tail skink, Solomon Island skink. Look at him right there. There's his tail. And there she is, El Diablo and Solomon looking really happy in their new enclosure. Remember, when it rains and the older this stuff gets, it's gonna start to rot a little bit. It's gonna look aged and uh, almost as ancient as our two reptilian friends right here. Thanks so much, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends if you love seeing how we take care of our animals here and uh, spread the news. See you soon.